Mr. Heng Sui Kiat, Minister for Education, Ms. Chang Lai Fang, Permanent Secretary, Education, and also Chairperson and IE Council, Mr. Nyo Keng Hong, Permanent Secretary, Education Development, Ms. Ho Ping, Director General of Education, and Deputy Chairperson and IE Council, Professor Freddy Bui, Deputy President and Provost Nanyang Technological University, members of NIE Council, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. At this Teachers' Investiture Ceremony, we have the privilege of presenting 449 graduates of the Postgraduate Diploma in Education, including Physical Education, Bachelor of Arts and Science in Education, Bachelor of Education, Diploma in Education programs and other specializations. My heartiest congratulations to all our graduates today as we gather here to celebrate your success and your choice of a number of vocation. We really want to uh, give you an, an applause, a round of applause for joining this wonderful fraternity. You know, about a year ago, you all were beginning teachers at the Teachers' Compass Ceremony. It then marks the entry of your journey as a student teacher. You were presented with a compass at the ceremony. I hope you still have your compasses with you. The symbolism of the compass in the ceremony is that teacher have a duty to serve as a moral compass to their students, pointing to the direction of the true north. Teaching is a calling. What our children and youth need most today is meaning and direction. As teachers, you have the responsibility to guide, lead, care, and inspire your students. Teaching is a demanding profession, yet these demands are filled with opportunities to make a difference to the lives of your students, even their families, the community, and the nation. Having been through your program at NIE, I hope we have reinforced in you your faith in this calling. You know, more than 30 years ago, I was just like you beginning my career <clears throat> as a mathematics and physics teacher. I was teaching in a school with the usual express and normal stream, and I was assigned to be the form teacher of a secondary three class. I had a great time with my students. Just recently, last December, I had an opportunity to gather with some of them. That was my students 30 years ago. Now, one of them, Shen Ming, is now COO of a major company. Another, Sing Jong, is actually an IT consultant. Yet another, Ernest, is a financial advisor. And yet another, David, uh, is in fact a vice dean of a school at the National University of Singapore. Do you know that when we gather together, what they asked me, one of them said, Sir, can you give me some tips on how to motivate my teenage sons with additional mathematics? This is the joy of teaching. 30 years later, your ex-students still call you sir. None of my staff call me sir. <laughs> Even you PGD students and degree students these days don't call us professor sir. But my ex-students do so. So I ask them, what did your children's teachers do? Did they tell them stories like I used to tell you about Euclid, Archimedes, Frederick Goss, or El Kawarizimi? He says, probably not, because they had to complete the syllabus. <laughs> you know, actually, each of the wonderful gentlemen that I taught in my first form class came from very different backgrounds. At least one of them I know, I remember, didn't have an easy time. You know? By accepting the responsibility and the commitment to teach, you enter a fraternity that is deeply invested 
in nurturing children and youth, irrespective of their background. I hope NIE has equipped you with the right mindset and perspective to become a truly caring and inspiring teacher. It is really a privilege and blessing to be in the teaching profession in Singapore. Now as a university professor and having seen and learned many educational systems internationally, I can say with all objectivity and confidence that nowhere in the world is the teaching profession as well supported and upheld by the education ministry. In Singapore, even our Minister of Education, Mr. Heng Suket, speaks the heart of a teacher. Just at the last work plan seminar, Mr. Heng spoke passionately with us about four qualities that describe the Singapore teacher. First, teachers must believe in their students. This quality is centered on the very belief that every child can learn, can achieve, and do much more. At NIE, you would have learned that as a teacher, your first and foremost priority is always your students, the learners. Through your educational studies courses, you have learned that the teacher must be aware of learner development and diversity. You need to recognize that every child learns differently, and you need to provide the best possible learning environment for your students. I also want to thank Mr. Heng for the second and third points that he made, that as teachers, we must believe in ourselves and in one another. This is premised on the belief that we all strive for excellence, that we will continue to hone our craft. And every child that we are helping, and every child that we help to grow, we are also growing personally and professionally. As the old proverb says, iron sharpens iron. And I hope at NIE, you have cultivated collegial, professional friendship that will help to always encourage one another and share with one, one another your inspiring stories, ideas, and good pedagogies. Mr. Hing also emphasized that in Singapore, teachers must believe in being part of a larger community. Teachers, we are part of the larger Singapore story. And more importantly, we constitute a very important part in nation building. I hope through your group endeavor in service learning, yourself for short, you have begun to cultivate a strong sense of your teacher identity and recognize that your service is not only to the students but also to the teaching fraternity, your profession, and also the larger community. Through your service learning projects, I hope that you have forged meaningful and lasting partnership even with the community. These community partnerships help you to understand your future roles as teacher. For example, in future you might encounter a young learner struggling with serious family issues. And you should be able to assess and see that in your community, there are organisations that you can help refer this child and the family to, so that the child will be helped not only in the school, but also in the family background. As we look back at the past 50 years of our Singapore story, there is no denying that we have achieved phenomenal success in education. However, success of such magnitude never happened by accident. So what lies ahead at the heart of what lies at the heart of our nation's success? Every progress we have made as a nation is a result of purposeful and intentional planning. During the early years of Singapore's independence, we were a very vulnerable and young nation, trying to stand on our own two feet. Knowing that failure is not an option, our leaders deliberate every major decision for Singapore and did not leave anything to chance. This kind of intentional planning became a defining attitude of the way Singapore society works. The education system is no different. It is a pillar of nation building characterized by such intentional planning. Such purposeful, intentional planning permeates every part of education, from the macro level of policy making right to your planning in the classroom. At NIE, we devote the same kind of deliberation and effort and intentional planning in preparing teachers. I also hope that 
during your time at NIE, you have also met teacher educators who have become your mentors and perhaps gurus. I also have many mentors who have helped me at different stages of my professional life. Today, I want to pay tribute to one of my mentors. One of my dear mentors is the guru, Professor Ruben Feuerstein, a renowned, famous uh, psychologist. Those of you who have read my educational psychological text diligently, you would know who is this professor. You have remembered his uh, theory and his research. I met him about a year plus ago. Shortly after that, he passed away in April at the age of 92 years old. Professor Feuerstein worked with children with special needs from more than over 80 countries. And he inspired in me the very basic belief that guide every educator in what we do, that we need to believe in every child and that every child can learn irrespective of background and even etiology. Professor Rubenstein often said, chromosomes, that is genes, do not have the last say. On the contrary, the human mediator, especially the teacher, can make a significant difference to the life of a child. When we say that every child can learn, let it not be a rhetoric. When Feuerstein said that every child can learn, he meant it and he practiced it. He was always very honest about the fact that to help a child, we need to invest time and energy. He knew very well that you cannot see drastic improvement just within weeks. But he believed that if one is willing to put in the time and effort, even a troubled life can be turned around. In other words, with a mediator, every child can be greatly helped. You, as a teacher, is the important mediator. And for this time, especially emphasize the fact that when we mediate, we mediate with intention, with meaning, and with transcendence. What do we mean by this? When you mediate with intention, meaning that when you go into the class, you have this, this heart desire that every child will attain to a certain skill. And when you find that one or two child who don't seem to get it, it just occupies your mind. And you go back home and you think, hey, I'm going to get this child excited about the subject tomorrow. I'm going to help this child to get this concept right. Now, if this pedagogy didn't work this day, I'm sure I'm, there's something else that we can do to help this child. That is the kind of intention that characterizes a good mediator. Secondly, a mediator always bear in mind meaning. Are your students finding meaning in the classroom? Are you creating meaning for the child in such a way that it meets his aspiration. And finally, everything that you do is never for just for the now and then. It is about the principle of transcendence, meaning that what you do with the child has always to impact him in the learning beyond the now and then. In other words, learning is life-wide and lifelong. These are the kind of teachers that's going to impact lives that will build society. You know, for his work to improve the thousands of lives, Professor Ruben Feuerstein was nominated for the uh, Nobel Prize in 2011 for humanitarian work. Uh, though he didn't get the award, all the great psychologists still regard him probably as the greatest psychologist of our century because of the internal, eternal sense of hope that he put in every child. Even as we seek to remain relevant and responsive in education in the next 50 years, we must not forget something more fundamental. As members of the teaching profession, we need to be reminded that what our faith and our belief in every child counts. May you always be guided by the truth north, true north in your calling as a teacher. Thank you.